Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Jawan Chan, the president of World Smart Cities Forum. Uh, this is um, the, uh, the Ukrainian Smart City uh, International Forum. And this is actually uh, the, the session number three. Um, we are actually having a pronounced speakers around the world and to share their insights uh, regarding the small cities in general. Uh, personally, I am actually co-hosting um, this session, this whole international forum together with the Ukrainian government and also the, uh, the Lviv Polytechnic uh, National University. Um, so throughout these sessions, we'd like to um, get it, get to more, uh, get to understand much more about uh, what's smart city in general and what's going to be happened with the uh, smart city projects and initiatives in Ukraine. So before we just go, I'd like to introduce uh, the um, guest speakers from uh, Lviv Polytechnic uh, National University. Can you introduce yourself real quick, please? Uh, thank you for the invitation. And uh, my name is Oleg Duma. I'm deputy head of international relations in the Department of Administrative and International uh, Security Management. Uh, also, a private entrepreneur and mentor in startups. Uh, my name is Alexey Drov. I'm a professor at Lviv Polytechnic National University and also a deputy director of uh, Tech Startup School and deputy director of uh, Scientific Park of Lviv Polytechnic National University, Seed City. Thank you very much. And uh, I also would like to ask every one of you to just introduce yourself, uh, maybe one, no more than one minute. Uh, can we just start from uh, Miguel? Hello, um, thanks for the invitation. Uh, my name is Miguel Amaral. I'm a professor at IST, which is an engineering school from uh, University of Lisbon in Portugal. And so I'm, I'm coordinating the, I'm from the engineering ma management department and I, I'm coordinating the technology and policy, um, technology policy and management lab. And also I just recently founded the, the social innovation lab. And so I'm involving uh, engineering students with social impact in many communities and cities in the world. Um, and so I've been doing some research and also teaching about technology based entrepreneurship and innovation. And I'm going to talk about innovation uh, in general uh, in, in a broader perspective and how to measure innovation. Thank you. Michael? Thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Jansen. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called City Zenith. I'm an architect by training and an entrepreneur by vocation. I've been uh, helping uh, the company has to pioneer something called uh, digital twins uh, in the city sector. Our specialty is something called urban scale digital twins, which I will be introducing today and hopefully walking you through examples of what they are and what they look like and the type of value that they're driving today. Um, we work all over the world uh, with a big focus on decarbonization specifically in the built environment. Uh, our main target um, audiences and the types of projects that we work on range from airports to ports to districts to entire smart cities, that type of thing. So it's very exciting to be showing some of our new work today. Um, and we were just named a World Economic Forum Global Innovator last week. So we're super thrilled to be working with them now in their zero carbon cities program. Um, looking forward to sharing. Fantastic. Uh, Professor uh, Martin Weiss, you're next up. So. Um, <laughs> I'm Professor Martin Weiss. I'm, I'm in the School of Computing and Information at the University of Pittsburgh, and I'm also um, Associate Director of the um, Center for Governance and Markets at the University. A lot of my work has been in the area of technology policy, specifically related in the past to telecommunications. In the past several years, I've become interested in um, in, in under, understanding how technological infrastructures are governed um, using economic frameworks from institutional economics. Um, and, um, and I also do some teaching in this area. Um, smart cities is a, is a relatively new area for me. And um, 
it's interesting to apply these theories in a um, in a uh, in this new context. Thank you very much, uh, Anna. Hello, everybody. My name is Anna Rabie. I'm a director of Smart City Council in the European Technology Chamber. Uh, we are a non-profit organization which support business to spread their technology for uh, uh, mankind and we strongly believe that technology obliges. This is our mission and in Smart City Council what we do, we, uh, we share knowledge and we act as a networking tool. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Uh, finally, uh, Jawad. Thank you, Peter. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jawad Zada, and it's a pleasure to be speaking to you all today. Um, I'm a, a smart city strategist. I, I run a, a small consultancy that helps both governments and technology companies understand, design, develop, and deliver smart city strategies. Um, I recently was the future cities and prosperity specialist working with the UK government, um, helping deliver the Global Future Cities Program, which is a, an 80 million pound program delivering 30 smart cities projects in 10 countries. Um, I'm now about to start a commission again with the UK government, looking at uh, digital trade between the UK and Eastern Europe and Central Asia, including Ukraine, um, which is uh, why I, I, I've been invited to, to speak here today. Um, and away from that, I'm also an angel investor and, and, and invest within um, emerging markets into into companies working within the, the smart mobility, smart energy and, and smart governance um, sectors. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Jawad. Uh, I'm sorry, I so um, the Dr. Jew is right here. So the, okay, actually, he, <laughs> okay, and the yeah, uh, Dr. Jew. thank you for uh, not forget, forget, forgetting me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the very very nice to meet with all of you. Um, the uh, my name is Young Sub Jew uh, from Korea. I'm engaged with the uh, Korea University as distinguished professor. And at the same time, uh, I am leading uh, the uh, Korea ICT Convergence Network as a chairman. Uh, actually, um, the, I spent uh, uh, 30 years with uh, industry, uh, including uh, several uh, CEO positions uh, with uh, several companies. And uh, I spent uh, five years with uh, academia uh, as a professor. And I spent um, the uh, five years with the uh, Korean government uh, took the two uh, the uh, public positions. One of them is a uh, uh, minister uh, responsible for SME, small and medium enterprises and startups. Uh, so I'm very uh, pleased to uh, have a chance to participate in this event. Thank you. Uh, so again, sorry about that. Uh, let me just briefly um, just go over with the progress and the concept uh, design of Ukrainian Smart City because uh, World Smart Cities Forum, I'm actually just sitting as a president here. Uh, the World Smart Cities Forum is based in, in London. Uh, also, we have entities and um, other, uh, you know, affiliates in the New York City. So uh, we have the, uh, the signed amended agreements between World Smart Cities Forum and the Ministry of Communities and uh, Territories Development of Ukraine. Uh, two weeks ago to kick off the, uh, the Smart City Ukraine initiatives uh, from this year. So this is actually the first starting point to get everything you know, the initiated uh, based on the PPP and also the international collaborative uh, work together with all different uh, agencies and private sectors combined. So let me just briefly explain uh, no more than uh, maybe seven minutes, then uh, I'll actually maybe jumping into the other, probably to toss it over to other speakers, uh, starting from the uh, Miguel. So I hope the, you can see this one. I already showed the uh, the previous um, sessions at the beginning of um, today's um, the forum, but I'll probably maybe jumping in very quickly. So I, as I explained, uh, World Smart Cities Forum is the key is nonprofit organization in in the UK, 
And uh, we have Alkai Labs, which is um, the funding uh, entities in, based in New York City, and Accenture is based in London and New York City to nurture and foster the startups. And we have uh, very strong um, um, experiences act, you know, to foster more than 300 startups in the UK. Some of them, they become unicorns based on smart city initiatives. Um, the master planning thing is one of the, the fundamental uh, functions of Archive Labs and where Smart City is formed. At the same time, we are actually the operating Smart City tech sandbox and every project and initiatives. And technology transfer and commercialization is one of the good uh, important um, the activities of uh, Akai Labs and World Smart Cities Forum, of course, uh, together with Accenture. And uh, every Smart City initiative is actually um, be required to get a lot of funds to, uh, to support the, the innovation ecosystem. So we're talking about a one billion US dollars uh, projects in Ukraine, in the Lviv area in the next five years. Let me explain later. Uh, this is actually current project we are actually working on. Um, so Ukraine is one of them, uh, but is very, very important uh, project and initiatives we are thinking of right now, because uh, the Ukraine is located in the, between in Western Europe and also far east. We can reach out to South Korea and Vietnam. So currently we are working on Vietnam right now. So trying to engage the specific small city initiatives in Ukraine with uh, other uh, reasons or cities in, in different countries. Um, the, I think yeah, maybe it's a little bit noisy here. Can you just mute from your own, from your, okay, thank you. So the philosophy concept is, um, is very important here too, because we weigh more, uh, in, we weigh people in, in you know, priority number one to begin with any type of the, the smart city initiatives. So we, we uh, just value people more and, you know, before anything else. So people-centric smart city design is something that we are trying to achieve uh, in the next few years. So data-driven economy, environmental-friendly uh, ecosystem, technology and um, the innovation is also a very important factor of the smart cities. And eventually these small city initiatives or maybe small project can work together with other similar or uh, a little bit different type of smart city initiatives uh, from overseas or maybe different countries. Uh, vision and core value we, is actually ongoing uh, agenda. Uh, the, as I said, uh, basic concept design and um, the master plan will be discussed with the leadership of the ministries or maybe central government of Ukraine, of course, the Lviv or Kiev. But I believe that the vision should be the smart city and innovation hub of Eastern Europe. And the value can be maybe uh, composed of four different things and pursuit of happiness of the residents or the citizens and sustainable sharing economy and job creation because the city should be sustainable uh, in terms of uh, the local economy and also the uh, uh, you know, the engines of the, the rolling its own uh, economy uh, for the long term, uh, the, for the long run. Uh, clean, uh, eco-friendly city is also important because everybody's talking about ESG these days. So the environment, uh, social and governance are the keys to support any type of initiatives during uh, COVID-19 pandemic and even we're talking about post-pandemic. And innovation, future technologies is also we have to, uh, you know, uh, just give the, this world and uh, economy and everything to the next generation. So next generation should survive, and also they can cultivate their future based on the new future, you know, the future uh, innovation and technologies. And the themes and technologies also important. What should be prioritized first? Uh, that might be changed in different times, but we see that. Uh, big data, uh, AI, blockchain, and uh, cloud services, and IoTs, and these are the fundamental functions of technologies. And with those kind of categories, uh, we can create some the specific themes to be uh, prioritized. 
uh, in the next few years. So which is mobility, healthcare, waste management uh, systems, for example, and uh, the securities and the safety and the smart buildings or smart homes. Those, uh, those uh, categories are the, maybe you can think about the first initiatives of the Ukrainian smart city in the next few years. Um, as I said, smart mobility, smart uh, water environment, for example, digital smart city, energy efficiencies and safety and living, those are the, the biggest categories we can think about first. And uh, also the, you can see uh, from your eyes, something is built uh, inside of the city. It could be maybe mobility. You can you know, uh, ship the existing fossil run, for example, diesel or gasoline run cars or trucks or commercial uh, mobility can be shifted into the electricity version. And also the, we can think about how to make the city much more safer to uh, sharing some data and also based on data, the people can uh, be you know, sharing the, their own energies. So we can call it as energy platform and smart finances using uh, utilizing the FinTech uh, or authentications uh, or a blockchain uh, kind of concept of the services. All we can think about the infrastructures of the city regarding the smart city. Uh, the, the special purpose corporation is required in every initiative, but as I said, PPP is the key thing to be you know, successful model of the small city. So local governments and central government combine together to uh, produce or uh, contribute themselves into the uh, smart city initiatives, but they um, maybe tend to lower their risk. At the same time, they can create the, uh, the huge rooms for the much more opportunities from the private sectors. So PPP, but very smart PPP model is required. So master plan can uh, attract the uh, Ukrainian government in which way, what kind of methodologies they can uh, think about uh, to uh, drive these initiatives very successfully. Uh, smart city tax and the box, box model is kind of unique because um, most of the cases of smart cities is that everybody's talking about, you know, building some buildings or factories or commercial, you know, roads or residential complexes. But, you know, um, some of the key things inside of it is from the innovation or technologies and solutions. So we believe that some of the innov innovative companies and with high tech or even the, the mid tech, low tech, we have to embrace more uh, young companies be involved in this one. So uh, about 30% of the budget and investment goes to the winners of this, um, you know, activities. So um, this is one of the things that we are nurturing the startups or small enterprises so that one of them, they are very successful and they become unicorns or semi-unicorns. They can change the whole ecosystem of, of the cities. So in that way, we can uh, push the smart cities much more attractive. Um, so again, uh, smart city tech sandbox in Ukraine, we are inviting all the startups around the world, not only from the Ukrainian uh, you know, uh, side, but probably maybe more than 50% uh, come from Europe uh, or Asia or North America. They just, just come here to uh, compete each other. So about 30% of the contestants will be a winner of the, uh, the bidding uh, programs. So they can actually achieve the, uh, their own projects. They can, um, they're working together with SPCs and local municipalities and central government so that they can um, build up the, their own ecosystem of innovation. Just like if you, you can imagine that uh, the Tallinn, Estonia is kind of a model but Tallinn is kind of a um, non-smart city innovation ecosystem to trying to benchmark from Silicon Valley. But Ukrainian is uh, the smart city combined innovation ecosystem, a little bit different, uh, but it's kind of a unique model. That is something that we, I'm actually thinking about uh, building up here in the Ukrainian smart cities based on this smart city tech sandbox model. 
And um, so this operations will be uh, run by the Accenture and Accenture.co is the official platform that we can invite more companies coming in. I'm thinking about about 200 startups around the world, including Ukrainian side, will be uh, becoming the one of the candidates to be involved with Ukrainian smart city projects, uh, yearly basis. So each course takes about 12 months. So this project will be uh, between five and six years. We, we can anticipate about five to six different courts happening in Ukraine, which is about 1,000 companies, you know, they are visiting Ukraine or they anchoring in Ukraine to get themselves into um, the, any type of the, the smart city uh, projects. We are running the open tech days and weekly basis by weekly basis. So another one's coming up next week. So um, we are, this time we are actually uh, releasing the op open tech day in Hong Kong and a virtual, uh, uh, the way, but you know, a lot of people in Asia, they are much more interested in how to collaborate with Western or maybe European uh, small city initiatives. Uh, this is something that we can just build up the collaborative activities between Europe and Asia, or maybe North America and Asia, North America and European uh, small city collaboration. Uh, I'm gonna skip this part, it's still working on right now. So we have the 12 month schedule right now, but um, also the, uh, the five year, the full schedule uh, in the next few uh, months. But uh, we are actually working based on this schedule we are trying to uh, the reach out the kind of uh, the destinations we can achieve that. Um, the from now on is just like a you know briefly I'm gonna talk about um, the basic concept of um, the the themes. So first of all, um, we are building up the small city tech sandbox in Ukraine. So it will be actually innovative cities and in, in Eastern Europe, of course also uh, utilizing open factory kind of concepts. Digital transformation is the key of the success in every countries and cities. So trying to make the city of Lviv um, as a digital city uh, in, in East, Eastern Europe. And uh, also the data is one good important. And the topic of this session for today, also we're talking about the data. And so we got to talk about this more. Um, the people-oriented and people-centric smart city design will also focus on how to design better than other cities, not just like only appearance of the cities, we are also design inside of the cities. So design is the key to be successful in the end. R&D stands together with the, you know, uh, the commercializations. So any type of uh, R&D uh, activities working together with academia. That's why we, we have the strategic partnerships with uh, the major academia. So that's why uh, Lviv Polytechnic uh, National University is among us in this kind of initiatives together. Um, the regulation free zone, which is the regulation, is also mandate and prerequisite. So uh, based on the deregulation, uh, uh, you know, the, the shield that the Ukrainian government and any cities in Ukraine can embrace or invite more companies in, in, with innovation to their site or the city. Uh, open big data city, which is the data market, uh, is kind of one of the things that we aim uh, at uh, in the eventual stage because um, the people are actually get used to sharing their data and that data can be uh, introduced or analyzed by the, the innovative companies and some public data can be um, reorganized and um, uh, developed in a way of um, to support the smart city function. And civic experience innovation technology because the residents and the people in the city, they, they want to experience how they actually be satisfied with the the, all the services and solutions in the city. So we are trying to make this happen throughout the, the urban test bed, uh, probably maybe from the, the environment or energy, transportation, or mobility, safety, and healthcare, for example. Uh, most of the cases we're trying to, um, 
you know, uh, you know, make the the residents of people and the citizens of the cities experience fully, then they probably may be satisfied with it. So, and uh, lastly, as I mentioned earlier, um, one of the cities, for example, the Viv Small City Initiatives can be working together with other cities, probably London, or maybe, you know, Florida, and here in New York City. So this multilateral way of the collaborations on these initiatives, because maybe there might, there must be common ground in terms of the themes or topics. So we're trying to um, integrate all those uh, resources and the themes and to make the, the produce one certain project on, as a market. So which is uh, really helpful for Ukrainian smart city uh, to be exposed in the, the global markets. And that is the point that they can um, attract more companies or are in this academia come to the Ukraine. So this is it. Uh, so we can talk about uh, when we uh, finish our speeches. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Miguel Aramar, and uh, you can just speak about your session from now. Okay. Let me just share. Just a moment, please. Mm -hmm. So the only option I have is to share the entire screen, right? If you have any difficulties, then let me know, then one of our uh, colleagues can help you out. Yeah, if possible, yes, I would like some help because I would like to share only my PowerPoint and not the entire screen. Okay, so in that case, uh, Miguel, can you um, just send the uh, your presentation back to oh yeah okay okay uh you know uh on mm -hmm. so on can you actually leave your email address here so you can get it so please uh, probably maybe i can ask uh dr Ju. you can go first then maybe where you go next okay? yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry for okay. this all right dr Ju. Okay. I'm going to share a screen. Yeah, just the uh, share button at the bottom of the screen. Yep. If you just click share, yeah, and there's a little just pop up window you can see. Mm -hmm. Go to window. Okay, there you go. Can you see? Um, yeah, yeah. I, presentation? Yeah, I, yeah, I see that. Can you make it uh, bigger? Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. You. Okay, um, the uh, um, I'm gonna uh, present uh, uh, kind of uh, the uh, my presentation. Uh, the title: uh, Strategic Direction of the uh, Smart Cities, uh, driven by data and uh, the uh, innovation. Uh, just me, please. Okay, so um, the. Uh, once again, uh, let me introduce briefly on the uh, Binance Beyond Sub 2. Uh, I'm uh, the uh, distinguished professor at uh, uh, Korea University. Um, the actually, um, the world is uh, currently uh, uh, can be characterized as a, a hyper change era. So um, the everything is changing at, at the light speed, uh, including uh, the uh, uh, economic environment, uh, basically, and uh, the first natural revolution, new normal, 
and technology is changing, generation is changing, capitalism is changing, uh, management philosophy is changing, and we are facing a COVID-19 pandemic and uh, climate uh, crisis is uh, what we are concerned right now. So actually in this, uh, this kind of the uh, uh, hyper change era, um, the, oh, yeah. So uh, actually uh, core part of the, uh, um, the technology uh, mega trend is uh, data. So uh, CES, uh, Consumer Trend Show uh, in Las Vegas, uh, last year, they announced that uh, the next 10 years will be a uh, age of data. So actually, um, intelligence of uh, things has been uh, proposed uh, to uh, take care of the age of data. So uh, the, uh, the the actually uh, transforming uh, current IoT, Internet of Things, into uh, intelligence of things, new IoT. So by uh, actually the old IoT is uh, basically connectivity. So uh, that connectivity creates uh, the data, but uh, con in conjunction with uh, 5G, uh, the, uh, the hyper data uh, will be generated. And then uh, the AI, hyper uh, AI, uh, hyper intelligence uh, will uh, analyze the, uh, this data uh, to create the new values, new growth engines, and new, uh, new uh, the, uh, industries, and new uh, the uh, value added. So uh, that is the uh, uh, interest of things. So um, actually, smart city uh, is a, a typical um, the uh, uh, example and one of the most uh, highlighted uh, applications of uh, fourth industrial revolution technologies based upon uh, the uh, digital uh, transformation. So um, the uh, um, this smart cities uh, are supposed to uh, reflect uh, this kind of mega trends. Uh, completely. So um, we can uh, say that uh, smart city is a kind of convergence of all smart axes. So uh, the uh, converging uh, the uh, smart homes, smart uh, buildings, smart uh, mobility, smart energy, smart healthcare, smart education, smart administration, smart finance, smart everything. So on uh, the uh, this uh, all uh, convergence of the all type of the, uh, uh, the factors of uh, smart cities uh, center around the, the, the data. Uh, today is the key uh, message of today. So actually, in terms of the uh, strategic direction of the uh, smart cities, uh, we need to uh, redesign uh, the smart city model. So in other words, they design a new uh, smart city model by uh, means of the uh, digital transformation or intelligence of things. So um, the, now, the, especially um, as a result of the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic and uh, the upcoming uh, the, uh, cri uh, the climate crisis, uh, the, the, the future direction of the uh, smart cities has been uh, rede redefined. So uh, in, uh, that into key uh, keywords of the uh, uh, the three keywords uh, uh, emerged as a uh, uh, future direction. Uh, that uh, includes the uh, responsiveness and flexibility and uh, resilience. So uh, the, uh, uh, that, that will be the core concept of the uh, future smart cities. So actually in order to achieve uh, the three keywords, uh, the uh, data and innovation uh, must be required. So uh, the, based upon uh, this kind of the uh, philosophy uh, and new concept, uh, we need to uh, redesign city functions and city spaces and uh, actually uh, digital transformation uh, the, will be uh, the uh, kind of core enabler uh, for to achieve this kind of goal. And um, first step, uh, based upon uh, this kind of the uh, direction, uh, first step uh, the, the, uh, and the most important step we must follow is to uh, build uh, shared vision uh, of cities, uh, smart cities. So actually technology is important, but uh, uh, this shared vision uh, could be uh, more uh, important uh, than technology itself. So, uh, but uh, actually based upon uh, the, uh, the uh, shared vision, uh, we uh, need to achieve uh, the, uh, this goal by means of the uh, technology innovation. So um, actually, as I uh, emphasized, the, uh, we need to start uh, the by securing consensus uh, among uh, 
the uh, consti constituents of the uh, municipal uh, the uh, ecosystem. So basically, uh, generally speaking, uh, the uh, sh shared vision of smart cities uh, could be uh, including uh, these five uh, goals. Uh, the everybody wants to be uh, uh, the healthy and uh, sustainable, safe and uh, intelligent and smart and the uh, growing. So uh, the actually some city could. Uh, follow all five directions, or some city may put more emphasis on us uh, on some some uh, of the uh, these five goals. So based upon uh, the um, when we uh, the uh, design uh, the uh, smart cities, uh, currently uh, the ESG uh, becomes the uh, and ESG is emerging as a very important uh, philosophy. So. Uh, ESG environment, uh, social, and governance must be embedded uh, into a smart city model. So uh, the um, the the actually uh, environment uh, is uh, could be uh, the achieved by means of the, uh, the technology innovation uh, for uh, the environment and energy or uh, energy saving technology or climate change uh, technology something like that. And social uh, will be a uh, Kind of the also achieved by means of the uh, uh, the innovation uh, the to achieve uh, the vision of the society uh, and then governance is uh, basically means the uh, transparency diversity diversity inclusiveness and fairness uh, within uh, the uh, smart cities and then the actually based upon uh, this the uh, um, uh, the shared vision. Uh, the uh, the core technology uh, will be an enabler uh, to uh, achieve uh, the uh, this goal. So um, the first step uh, to uh, the uh, create uh, the uh, technology perspective of the uh, smart cities uh, is to start with uh, uh, connectivity. So uh, the uh, all kinds of the uh, sensor networks. Uh, on the 5G's or wired and wireless communication, and uh, those the uh, connectivity will create uh, the a lot of data, uh, the uh, the very big data uh, as well as the uh, fast data. Fast data is a uh, um, the kind of real time basis. Uh, so uh, the and and then uh, those data will be analyzed by uh, AI, uh, the including uh, cloud computing as well as the uh, edge computing. So and then uh, digital twin uh, is going to be a uh, Key technology uh, to uh, enable the uh, modeling and simulation uh, of the uh, the uh, cities. And um, currently, the uh, EU uh, is uh, executing uh, the, uh, the the EU wide um, massive uh, projects, uh, called, which is called Gaia Gaia X project to build uh, EU uh, data ecosystem. So uh, the, actually, this to uh, start with uh, the uh, creating uh, the uh, use cases as well as the uh, federated data structure. Uh, so uh, that is uh, one uh, the the example of the global efforts uh, to uh, the uh, the build uh, the, uh, the data driven uh, the uh, economy. And actually, a smart city uh, is a part of uh, this kind of big picture. And Korea is uh, also uh, the, uh, the announced uh, uh, Korean uh, New Deal, uh, which is uh, composed of the uh, three parts, uh, including uh, digital New Deal, a uh, green New Deal, and uh, stronger safe net. And um, the, this, the, uh, uh, the, the 10 key projects of the Korean New Deal policy Includes the uh, data. Then, so first thing, uh, the most important thing could be uh, establish the uh, big data platforms. Uh, that is uh, the, uh, the the country what uh, we are uh, the the which is in, in progress in Korea. And um, smart city actually COVID nineteen uh, pandemic uh, will accelerate uh, the uh, smart cities uh, rather than uh, the de de decelerate uh, it. Actually. Uh, create uh, uh, the uh, new opportunities uh, by means of the uh, accelerating digital transformation uh, in terms of the uh, smart cities. So uh, anyway, um, the, uh, we need to achieve a shared vision of uh, smart cities by uh, the uh, technology innovation. Okay, that's it. Uh, the, uh, the 
just yeah, 10 uh, minutes. Uh, okay, uh, very uh, nice to um, the, uh, share my ins uh, idea inside with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zhu. Really appreciate your uh, the very interesting presentation. Uh, for uh, everybody's uh, information, uh, Dr. Zhu was um, the uh, minister of uh, South Korean government a few years ago. He was actually in charge of the, the national venture and SMEs strategy and, uh, you know, the, the support. So he is really uh, a big expert in, in South Korea, knowing a lot of things about what's going on with the, the digital transformation and big data. And also, of course, he has a uh, very distant experience with the, the industries more than 30 years. And one of them is Hyundai Motors. So the Hyundai Motors is now becoming something more connected cars and electricity cars. So he is uh, has witnessed a lot of things going on uh, with the digital tr transformations mingling together with the existing industries. So uh, he's also the uh, you know um, taking a part of the advisor towards Smart Cities Forum. Um, so he's also helping me out in the building of the Smart City in Hanoi, Vietnam. Um, so uh, maybe we can actually talk more about and his uh, you know experience and his insights about um, small cities in Ukraine. So uh, thank you very much again, Dr. Uh, uh, Miguel, are you ready or you need more time? You are muted. Yeah, let me just share the screen. Mm -hmm. Can you see something? Not yet. No. So I, I got a notification saying that the browser cannot allow, does not allow me to share the screen. Okay. So in that case, I think the um, you know, on or Serafima will help mm -hmm. you out. They can operate your the presentation deck. So I'm sorry oh. again. Maybe I can uh, toss it over to maybe Michael. Can you just do now? Then maybe after Michael's presentation. I'll pass it over to Miguel. Is that okay, everyone? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, wonderful. So everything is yours. It's Can you see my screen? Not yet. Yeah, we see it. Can you see the PowerPoint now? Yeah. Okay, very good. Let me get this going and we'll be all good to start. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks very much, Peter, for inviting me into this. It's a pleasure to be on such a such an esteemed panel talking about smart cities. One of my favorite things. I am Michael Jansen. I am the founder and CEO of a company called City Zenith. Um, City Zenith is a, a software company that's based between uh, Chicago and and London. Does a lot of work internationally in a sector we call digital twins, uh, which Professor Drew just referenced. If you, if you listen to him carefully, he's talking about how important they're going to be for the future of smart cities. So for those of you who don't know what they are, digital twins are virtual replicas of buildings, infrastructure, and physical assets that are connected to all of the data in and around them. If you're familiar with tools like SimCity, I love to say that our product, Smart World, is like SimCity, but for real cities with real data that have real problems. Uh, they get used by city planners, governments, architects, engineers, contractors, facilities management operators, owners, et cetera, to be able to not only analyze everything that's happened uh, in a large complex uh, area of the city, but also to simulate various outcomes that can range from uh, climate impact to financial impact to pedestrian flow. Forbes has recently stated that 500 major world cities will rely on digital twins by the year 2025. So that's a lot. That's a lot of things happening. So what, what are these things exactly? Um, we specialize in a type of digital twin called urban digital twins. There are digital twins that um, are, for example, specific to manufacturing. 
uh, and also those that are specific to even the medical industry. But our focus is on aggregating all the massive amounts of complex, both static and dynamic data in something as large as the city. Uh, our projects tend to be uh, infrastructure related, uh, the airports, ports, master developments, downtown urban core regeneration projects, you know, so on and so forth. A couple of things you're seeing here is a, a new capital city we designed in India with Sir Norman Foster of London called Amravati Smart City. And then on the right, we did a, a project in the UK, uh, an infrastructure project that was basically 100 kilometers that ran from Oxford to Cambridge, the, the country's uh, first ever bullet train. So with Amravati, uh, this was an interesting project. The, the, the goal here was to aggregate massive amounts of design information because this was a new city for 3 million people uh, into a common uh, uh, 3D data enabled framework that would allow multiple architects and engineers working from different countries to, to integrate their 3D design models into one fabric and be able to run microclimate simulations. We were able to test and show how by using this tool, these architects could, could reduce the average street temperature in the city by eight degrees in the middle of summer, just by simulating the impact of the designs again and again uh, using this tool. It was very powerful. Uh, similarly here um, with the project in the UK, this was a large uh, infrastructure project. It was a bullet train that ran from Oxford to Cambridge. It was an interesting uh, uh, opportunity for us to kind of really go deep and and get into the infrastructure world. Let me give you a sense of what that looks like in a video because we pulled something up here that I want to share with you. Now, you know, digital twins get used for different things. So I'm going to show you two quick examples today of what they get used for at different scales. Now, now we're talking about, in the case of this project, a massive 100 kilometer, you know, $2 billion uh, infrastructure line, a high speed uh, a line that's going to connect two major smart cities together, Oxford and Cambridge. And they needed one single comma, as Professor Ju said, you know, data map from which everybody could commonly make common decisions. And that's what we did. We had over 117 different forms of data loaded into this model that included 3D JPEGs that were taken by the site engineers uh, every 10 meters, and these would be time stamped. Now we also had um, what we call LIDAR point cloud scans. This is amazing. They actually flew a drone over the site to capture an extremely high resolution point cloud. And then we imported that point cloud, and I think I'll show it, it looks like this. And the resolution of this cloud, once we kind of zoom in on it, and you can see that little strip there, is down to the leaf. So you know, engineers then can integrate their design models like this. And when they're working with contours and site conditions, they have an extremely accurate terrain model that is, that is loaded with data and allows them to make very critical decisions in real time. It's a very powerful tool for, for that type of Michael? Okay, so I don't know. He just he left. <laughs> Maybe some technical issues. Yeah, mistakenly uh, get out of there. Yes, I just I had an exact same experience. He'll, so, he'll be back. <laughs> yeah, he's coming back again. But um, so uh, just before I was also kicked out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, just um, let's just talk a little bit about just before he just come back. I think the digital twin is uh, one of the very important things because when I was a master planner, master planner in South Korea, and, uh, the smart city pilot project, I was actually working on a digital twin. So there were like kind of a couple of um, the benchmarking uh, areas of digital twin because. Digital Twin is an immense uh, platform that collects all the data to, uh, to build up the kind of the, the digital model of the small city. So in even uh, many years ago, the city is easily built by the kind of blueprints. And once blueprints done, then the construction is actually just, just go ahead. But Digital Twin is to reduce the kind of um, the error and um, as well as you know the inclusiveness of the, all the, the stakeholders uh, of the cities can t 
test it. So based on the you know sharing data and every components of the the cities and people can you know preliminary they use them or they test them. So this is kind of process. Maybe one year, two years, then everything is actually just okay to go. Then the 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 practical construction is actually followed by, and uh, this way. Um, the, so I think there are two um, digital uh, twin initiatives. One was actually happened in uh, Andorra, the small country between Spain and France. So that was actually initiated by the MIT labs, and uh, I think there may be some. Uh, you know, the research work with the professors and the, the students and PhDs, they're actually working on that Andorra case. It's actually is workable because it's a small city and small town. And they just and just did it. And also the, the altitude is a way different because uh, this Andorra is located in the one, you know, kind of high altitude of the kind of into the mountains. So it was really critical to design uh, well, uh, well enough. Another one is actually Singapore Digital Twin Initiatives. They they trying to the, bring all the models into the, you know, the center city and uh, some of the part of the, the Singapore area. But I, as far as I understand, the Singapore government they are still working on very hard on that. And I also see many companies around the world actually um, they are working very hard on developing digital twin uh, solutions. And uh, most of the cases used at the building of the new factories or, um, uh, for example, you know, very sophisticated factories, uh, you know, nuclear factory, for example, and it was actually digital twin uh, solutions was actually really applied to it. And so, but, you know, digital twin will be definitely one of the measures that we can consider. And I, I also think that digital twin initiative, I mean, digital twin process will be applied to building up as a Ukrainian smart city uh, in the next few years. So, Michael, are you here or are you just lost? Michael? Okay. All right. Um, this is strange. Let me see. All right, so I think that uh, without presentation, uh, Anna, can you maybe jumping in uh, until, well, actually you can go ahead, uh, you know, sharing your insights. I know European Tech Chamber, basically European Tech Chamber and World Smart Cities Forum are the strategic partnership we actually signed a, a few days ago. Um, so there might be lots of chances because um, there are many different uh, supporting programs and benefit packages and to support the tech companies and R&Ds and any kind of the, the smart city initiatives from European end. I think the, um, the activities you know, delivered by the European Tech Chamber uh, is uh, pretty much you know, uh, broad and uh, also the, uh, very specific in many different ways. I, I, as far as I know, uh, EU Tech Chamber also have the, the physical centers on different sites, including China, and also in European side, and probably maybe one from uh, the, the Latin America. So uh, just I'd like to ask you about what is the kind of goal of uh, European Tech Chamber regarding smart city uh, from your end, and what kind of activities you are basically planning for it? Um, any type of the uh, the ongoing projects in, in Europe, for example. I know I probably maybe understand that you're from Poland. Uh, personally, I helped uh, the ecosystem of Poland many years ago uh, in Krakow and Warsaw, because I actually spoke in a keynote speaker there, and uh, there was the biggest EU fund to support the Poland's uh, Polish uh, national infrastructure the you know the building of the, the roads and the highways and also the centers and everywhere so i think that that was a really big uh things going on in poland uh in, in warsaw for example and or krakow and what do you mean about kind of the perspectives your perspectives on smart cities in europe and what is the purpose of your jobs your activities to be uh, um collaborate with other uh, you know, partners or, uh, you know, and organizations. 
Yes, exactly. You are right. Uh, I'm based in Poland. Uh, I'm actually I'm exactly in Warsaw. Uh, so it's, uh, I am very happy to listen about Ukrainian development and what they are doing at the moment uh, with you, uh, especially we, that we are neighbors and uh, it's, it's amazing to see uh, new, uh, new ideas being uh, developed uh, all around us. Uh, so that's wonderful. Um, as, as a smart city council in uh, European Technology Chamber, um, we are open to support any uh, new ideas regarding smart cities. I just joined the team, so it's it's just the beginning of uh, <laughs> of my experience with with the chamber. So um, we are starting uh, next week uh, with a discussion about uh, data governance in small smart city. So that's the way how we want to. Um, uh, make people involved into the discussion about all important topics for smart smart city. Uh, what we do, we we bring uh, expert uh, from uh, with university background uh, and business uh, from from business sites as well. Also, I'm I'm trying at the moment to uh, attract some uh, some guys uh, locally here from Warsaw, from Poland and other cities uh to 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 join me with this uh, discussion so uh, to, all together we will build in the future some common voice and we will support all the uh, new ideas and uh, developments which are going on so i hope to spread this uh, whole knowledge uh, also for my country and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's that kind of fit what what we are doing now. Uh, Peter, you are muted. Always happen. <laughs> So thank you very much again, Anna. So I, I do believe that uh, the organizations like the EU Tech Chamber is actually has a lot of um, dimensions to work with other, you know, partners or government agencies and even the government, the central government, they actually working on the smart city. The message is the kind of um, the nonprofit organizations like World Smart Cities Forum and the EU Tech Chamber is to, um, you know, the provide the, the leadership of the, the, the countries or the cities is a righteous way, how they actually spend their, you know, the smart budget, uh, instead of the, just dumping the money for nothing. Uh, the smart city doesn't mean anything about building something new. Uh, we're trying to fix something uh, from the, um, you know, experience or the resources from the innovation or resources from the human, you know, work, uh, or maybe even governance, and what kind of way they have to just deal with it, and how the the, the problems or challenges of the the, the cities can be uh, fixed or dealt with, and uh, you know, this is actually some kind of the righteous message to those you know the the leaderships, and so I think that way uh there might be a lot of chances and opportunities of the EU Tech chamber of course and we uh probably maybe aiming at so i think that uh the ukraine is developing country a lot of chances opportunities and many different resources i can see and also human resources are really strong here uh also i saw that a lot of uh, you know the biggest ecosystem in eastern europe uh with uh Walsall or krakow in poland and I do also believe that other adjacent countries like uh, Austria or Czech Republic, they can be kind of, you know, one of among them, among the, um, the rising stars of the Eastern European nations. I think the, the, the small city is a great platform uh, to giving us the very strong messages to the future of those countries. So this is something that I actually probably maybe uh, discuss more with the tech chambers from now on. Um, 
Yeah. Yes, this is amazing how our cities are changing uh, in the last uh, few years. Uh, really, I, I cannot recognize my own city. That That's really amazing. And I'm just starting to support this uh, subject with UTEC, but uh, already interest from local companies and associations and other organizations is amazing. They want to learn from uh, western countries from other companies so uh, i believe ukraine can go the same path and uh, the re results will be amazing in the future thank you i really appreciate it all right so uh, probably maybe um the michael has a lot of issues with his computer so now i have to ask uh, uh professor martin bice and you can just you know uh, right next and to we are actually ready to hear from you. And please unmute. You are muted still. Yeah, I was in the process of sharing my screen. Okay. It turns out you can't do both. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a button in the in the bottom of the screen, share button, you can see that. Mm -hmm. You can click it and then share screen, click it. Okay, there you go. Yeah, except it's not the right window. Mm -hmm. um, so I had it working before. Do you see the presentation now? Uh, I see only white. Uh, oh, video. okay. Let's try this again. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> so you see the screen now? Yep. Great. Can you enlarge the presentation? Yeah. Yeah. There. There we go. So um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. This is a, a, a really tremendous opportunity for me and, and hopefully some of my thoughts and ideas are helpful for this process. I was um, really intrigued by these ideas of digital twins. It reminds me an awful lot of the kinds of things we've been doing in, um, in simulation ourselves around using agent-based simulation technologies. But, you know, that's another conversation for another day. <clears throat> um, so in, in the, per, per the topic of the session, I'm going to focus on, on data um, particularly, but a lot of my interest comes around governance of infrastructure systems in general. Um, so this could apply a bit more broadly. First, I want to just as a reminder that governance doesn't always mean government, right? We confuse the two because the words sound similar, but just because we have a governance system doesn't mean that um, it has to involve the central government or any kind of government. Um, so just as a intellectual foundation, um, Infrastructure resources um, have been studied quite a bit in the economics and the legal literature. Um, and some of the things that come up are ideas like the ones produced by Brett Frischman in his uh, 2005 article, where he basically said, you know, an infrastructure resource can be consumed non rivalrously. So, in economic terms, it means that my consumption doesn't affect your consumption, that we can all consume it. Um, the other interesting distinguishing feature, according to Frischman, is that the demand for infrastructure is driven by downstream productive activity rather than for the, um, the infrastructure itself, right? So um, it's... Uh, this sets up an interesting source of indirection in terms of 
who pays and who benefits from it. Um, and the last thing is that the infrastructure uh, is a resource that can be used as an input to a wide variety of goods and services, um, some of which are private, some of which are public, and some of which are non-market. So these particular economic situations set up um, some really interesting challenges that I think as we start thinking about smart city infrastructure, the data that goes around it have to be addressed. Um, <clears throat> infrastructure really can mean a lot of different things, right? And so this is really, again, just a calibration point. Um, it can mean laws and regulations. Um, we have to, I mean, this is a, a kind of a social infrastructure for, um, for adjudicating, let's say, uh, commercial, um, it doesn't have to be disputes, but at least structure for contracts. Um, it can be physical resources, and this is what we usually think about, you know, roads, bridges, and in the case of smart cities, these are, are the sensors, the, uh, the AI technologies, the data itself, but it can also mean cultural norms. And this is where, where we get, um, especially as we start looking internationally at different smart city projects, we have different cultural norms, different expectations of government, which is also a kind of infrastructure. Um, other interesting things about infrastructure is that um, human behavior adapts to it, right? So, you know, when I start thinking about, for example, the digital twin projects that we were talking about, um, the, it's hard to understand how people are going to adapt to the infrastructure. We can plan the infrastructure, but how does that, how are people going to respond to it? And this is, this is really challenging. Um, we see this uh, when regulations, for instance, are instituted, people respond to regulations in a variety of ways that weren't expected. These are, these are um, um, often result in unintended consequences, which are not so good. Another thing about infrastructure is that we t it tends to become invisible, at least until it breaks. Um, and you know, this is a, again, it's an interesting phenomenon to consider. So as I said, there's a um, significant literature on infrastructure. Some of it is economic, but some of it is also more in the social aspect. Um, I point in, in particular to a, the summary paper that Edwards and his uh, co-authors wrote, um, where he looked at, you know, broad lessons from what infrastructure studies has, has unearthed. Um, and again, this is just a sampling of things. I'm not gonna go through each one in detail. Scales matter. Is it a small scale? Is it a large scale? Is it long-term? Is it short-term? These all have an um, impact on how infrastructures um, play in social settings. Um, we are in the process in smart cities of building infrastructure, but moving from building to sustaining infrastructure is challenging. Once the initial enthusiasm for the project fades and we have to actually keep running this thing. And so when I think about sustainability, this is one of the important things to consider is economic sustainability. Um, as infrastructures emerge, um, they're often fragmented uh, because the initial projects are smaller scale. Um, we ha may have competing institutions and technologies for them, um, which results in these islands of infrastructure. And so we need to have gateways between them. Planning can address some of it, but it can't always address everything. Um, these things cause infrastructures to break down, which makes infrastructure visible and spurs adaptions to address the causes of the breakdowns. And this is both infrastructure to humans as well as humans to infrastructure. We adjust our behavior as, um, as the infrastructure changes. Um, as I said, infrastructure is an intermediate product in economic terms. Um, and because it's an intermediate product, demand for the infrastructure can be difficult to measure. And I think uh, things like the, uh, the, the uh, 
World Smart City Forum is, is really trying to come to grips with, with some of these uh, challenges of how do you associate final product with infrastructure investment. Um, economically, again, infrastructure often features declining average cost to scale, which means that, um, that optimal pricing that um, economists have developed over the years tends not to work. And so we end up having to come up with new ways of, um, of having to price these things. Um, this picture was meant to capture this notion of an intermediate market. Um, we have the infrastructure that feeds user activities. Um, and these user activities are a lot of the innovation platforms that people are talking about. What do you use the data for? What do you use the infrastructure for? Um, these generate outputs which stimulate user activities, but these outputs also have secondary benefits, right? So you think about, um, let's say a, a, a parking app, right? So that people benefit from the sensors that feed the app, but there are these kinds of spillovers are that we have maybe less congestion in cities. So, you know, we have a different kind of infrastructure investment. Um, so why do we need governance? Um, we need governance mostly because we want to avoid the tragedy of the commons. Um, tragedy of the commons is a paper that was written by um, Garrett Hardin in the uh, 1960s. Um, and it was a, in many ways a corner case, an illustration of what happens when you don't have governance. Um, the Nobel Prize winning um, economist Eleanor Ostrom, whose work inspires much of my thinking, um, spent her career showing that if you have governance, you don't have to have tragedy. Um, and so we don't want tragedy. We don't want these systems to collapse. And so we need um, engagement. Um, socially, we want to uh, support an adequate supply of infrastructure. And we want these to align with the social goals, priorities, and preferences, which vary from city to city, from country to country. Um, <clears throat> for people who are benefiting from this infrastructure, we want them to um, be able to profit from this because that feeds the infrastructure, it makes the infrastructure relevant. Um, as well, we want to uh, be able to foreclose, we, we don't want to foreclose future activities. Um, so, you know, we want to build a platform or an API on which people can innovate. This is how um, this is how an infrastructure owner would benefit from um, from different uh, from governance, right? So it's not just governance is imposed, but government governance can be used by infrastructure owners if it's a private ownership of infrastructure to uh, benefit. Um, so when we think about smart cities, you know, the one way to think about it is as an information overlay, right? So we have a physical city and we want to build an information overlay on top of that. Um, smart cities almost always involve um, sensors, uh, a wide variety of sensors. Um, they may be, um, you know, at different levels. I mean, maybe as simple as temperature and and air quality, but it may be more complicated, such as traffic flow management and so on. Um, but these sensors end up feeding in uh, some kind of an analytics engine, which may, as, as Professor uh, Ju pointed out, it, you know, there may be a strong AI component, machine learning component, in order to support the kind of decision making in the short term for um, operations and the long term for planning. So there are a lot of types of data um, that we should think about when we think about governance. Um, there's the observations themselves that come from the sensor data. There's data we might derive from that um, based on, um, let's say, uh, algorithms. Um, there's metadata that goes along with the data. And there's data. Uh, about the management of this, right? So these are all the kinds of types of data 
that we have to think about, um, and there may be others. Um, the way in which um, things are, are relevant is how the infrastructure was built, because it, in, at least in many legal frameworks, this speaks to the ownership issues of the data. Um, if if the data if it's private, then the data may have private interests and private ownership. Um, what kinds of legal frameworks are in play? Um, and then the kinds of things that you want to think about is who, who gets to see what kinds of data? Uh, what, what is it used for? Um, exactly how much detail is exposed? And how, how long do you have data retention? And again, these are, these are not meant to be exhaustive questions. They're really meant to just kind of guide us, guide our thinking. Um, there are also the so-called collective action rules, which are really at a somewhat higher level. It, it gets, it's really about who decides about usage rules, who decides how rules are determined, who decides how rules are enforced. Again, these are also the kinds of governance questions that, that are, are important. So just as a thought experiment, and I know I'm, I'm running a little short on time, so I'll just run, run through this. There are a couple of extreme models that we can think about. Um, one is a purely decentralized model. Again, you think of these as endpoints, right? They're not meant to be um, necessarily um, um, exhaustive in any way. But in, in this model, individuals or groups deploy infrastructure to address local concerns. An example that I was thinking about is uh, in the, in the US, many people are buying these uh, smart doorbells, video doorbells, and these can be used to help uh, as sensors for public safety, for instance, right? But the, so the, the infrastructure deployment and investment is purely decentralized. Um, in this case, everybody makes their own decisions about what to buy. There may not be um, any kind of common standards. Um, and the result is that you end up with these infrastructure islands that may or may not be aligned with, with broader social priorities because they're really designed to support individual um, preferences. Um, in this case, the data is most likely owned by those deploying the infrastructure. Again, it's a little bit fuzzy in the case of these doorbells because we store them in the cloud and the company who provides that has some ownership rights to it. Um, much of the data governance is then determined locally um, and sharing is possible as we see, for example, um, with these uh, public safety applications of the, of the video cameras and door doorbells, but it's probably through some kind of a gateway or may also eventually be on a blockchain. One of the interesting ideas that come up with this is this notion of polycentric governance where we allow multiple centers of governance of data. And I think that's an interesting concept for us to move forward with. On the other extreme, we have um, a more planned um, approach to this. We have smart city projects kind of in the urban planning sort of um, uh, tradition where the financing and deployment is done centrally. Um, and at least nominally, the deployment is aligned with social priorities. Although, you know, if you're a fan of the um, public choice economics, you may, you may question that particular statement. There's often a centralized data repository um, and the governance is determined, may be determined centrally, right? Because you have a, a central place for it and it may have a stronger role for government than the decentralized case might be. And um, as we were talking about earlier, trust becomes a big issue in this case. So um, just the thoughts that I would like to leave you with, and I think this is you know, things to think about going forward is that we, Governance gives us the opportunity to, be, to bring competing objectives and preferences into a stable configuration. Um, and that's really what the goal is. Um, we want to find a common ground. Um, governance, again, unex perhaps unexpectedly, allows for learning. Um, users learn about the 
capabilities, limitations, and consequences, and infrastructure owners can learn about new applications and uses that can increase the value of their investment. And so we shouldn't forget that part of it. Um, and I think it's, you know, I think it's great to focus on successes, but I think it's almost it's as important to focus on failures. So what went wrong? How does it, um, you know, how can we think about the failures from a governance perspective? And the last, um, just, a, just a brief pitch about the Center for Governance and Markets, um, our, the, our, our whole sort of the grounding philosophy of the center is to, um, to try to understand how bottom-up types of solutions um, work. I mean, it's not like we're committed to those, but we're trying to find out the boundaries where bottom-up approaches work and perhaps where they don't work. Um, you know, we have and we're building a network of global partners. And um, in particular for smart cities, we want to understand how the how rules, again, these are economic rules, affect the abilities of communities to engage in effective collective action. Um, how do we how do we work together in these areas? So thank you very much for your attention. Let me. So um, thank you very much for your very deep insights, and uh, Professor. I think that the the governance issue is the most important thing to kick off any type of the governmental initiatives. Uh, it's not easy uh, from my experience and working together with many different countries. So uh, always uh, I spend more time, uh, lots of time to build up the, the better governance to start with the, uh, this type of the initiatives all the time. Um, I think that you are the, uh, you know, perspectives and to, you know, bring uh, your, uh, the theory uh, with the, the government, I think probably maybe Ukrainian government uh, can be beneficial in terms of um, the, the bringing this, uh, you know, smart city initiatives based on that. Thank you for your uh, your insights. Well, thank you. Thank you again for the opportunity. My pleasure. Uh, the pleasure is mine. So I'd like to actually, because we are, we spend so much time, I think that uh, I need to ask Jawad, Jawad, can Hi. You, yes, Peter. Yeah, because uh, we the other you know speakers are actually waiting uh, for the next session. So mm -hmm. can you jump into the next session because it's all almost related. Probably we can finish it with uh, Miguel here. Then you can just go with me uh, together with the next session. Can you do sure, it? Sure. Yeah, that's no problem at all. If if you want Miguel, yeah, he can he can uh, do the next presentation. I can like, contribute to the next one. Uh, however, it works best for you. Okay, wonderful. So, um, Miguel, you're up there right now. Can you just go ahead? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I need uh, and support to, to project the, the slides. So, Miguel, can you just finish as soon as possible? Uh, yeah, I, I think and should um, show the slides because I sent I sent it by email. Okay. So is on operate operating this or you were you just doing it? Okay. Wonderful. Uh, no, these are not. This is uh, uh, Michael's one. So before uh, Ann is actually operating this and anyone, any speakers, uh, if you are free, I can invite you to the next session, then uh, we can actually just discuss more there. Uh, Dr. Joe, if you're available, and uh, Professor Weiss, if you're available, we can actually have uh, panel discussions together. Is that okay to you? Fine. 
Okay, um, so on is actually left the link for the next session. So you can just go there after uh, Miguel's uh, presentation, okay? No, this... Okay, there you this go. one. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'll try to be brief and uh, sorry for these technical problems. Um, and I'm going to focus on, on, um, on the real uh, topic that we have here, uh, innovation and, and, and data, because um, uh, I think uh, I, I will talk in a very high level or try to, to give you a very broad perspective about uh, the challenges we, we face when we talk about innovation. Uh, of course, in the context of uh, smart cities, uh, and because innovation, like, just like governance or all the topics that we talked um, about before, uh, can be very broad. Um, uh, innovation can be very, can be very broad and can be conceptualized in many different ways. So when we talk about smart cities, I think it's nice that we know exactly what what kind of innovation are we talking about, what kind of data are we trying to deal with uh, and collect and to use and for what, what purposes. So, next slide, please. Um, I'm going to talk, uh, can you change slide, please? And Okay, so, uh, so innovation can be, can be uh, conceptualized as, of course, a good or service, so as a product as a process, marketing method, or as an organizational change that actually are totally new or at least uh, significantly improved, uh, whether in business practices, workplaces, external relations, etc. So uh, I think my question, next slide please, is to, is to ask you uh, also, uh, how can we adapt these to smart cities? So how can we look at some city and we can, how can we uh, understand um, if this is a innovative city, what kind of uh, products, uh, what kind of processes are, are being developed there, what kind of, um, uh, how are, are companies selling their products, how are people buying products, how are people living, uh, and for, for example, organ organizational change, uh, if we think of uh, a city as a big organization, let's say, with many t types of actors and agents, uh, so how can we um, look at governance, uh, new ways to organize uh, our city, to take decisions, to involve people in, on, on, on those decisions. So I think we can do this connection between, um, between innovation uh, as uh, when, when we talk about, for example, product or, uh, or something um, that we use on our day-to-day -day life. And we can do this uh, parallel with what's happening in, in a city. And we, I think we should come up with new ways of looking at uh, innovation in cities and try to understand what kind of what types of innovation uh, we have. Next slide, please. So there are many different uh, different paradigms of, of innovation. Uh, so we, we can talk about incremental innovation, revolutionary innovation, evolutionary. Uh, next, please. Uh, and for example, if we look at cities as uh, as um, uh, as like a system, uh, like like we do, for example, in a product, we can look at the product as a system, and and we can check if. Uh, we are bringing some innovation because we are changing some of the modules of this system or uh, we are changing not the modules but the system itself, the way they connect. So uh, based on these, on these approaches, we can talk about architectural innovation or modular innovation, for example. So architectural not in the sense of uh, construction building, but architectural in the, uh, in the sense that uh, are we changing the system? Are we uh, connecting all these blocks uh, uh, differently? Uh, or are we just changing some components of the model, but the architecture is the same? So I think if we translate this kind of, of thinking into cities, um, I believe th this can be, can be very interesting and give us a lot of uh, food for, for thought about smart cities and how we can see um, these, uh, these cities in, in the future now and in the future. Next, please. So there, there's a, uh, an, an image that I really like, which um, overlaps uh, this, uh, this uh, idea of impact with progress. And uh, in, when you talk about cities and smart cities and all the technologies that were mentioned before in, in last presentations, uh, technologies, approaches, uh, uh, frameworks, 
So they they all um, can can be connected to these two variables. Of course, this is more used to to technolo technological innovation. But if we think about this as like a very simple tool to look at uh, uh, how is a smart city evolving? So how are, are, are uh, how is this pro progress happening? What's the impact of of all these changes in the city? Uh, how they do they impact on people's lives? So if we cross these variables, we can think about also uh, incremental uh, approaches, disruptive, game changer, or breakthrough. Um, and we can, uh, I think we can look at cities uh, and some, a lot of processes, uh, products, uh, um, governance systems, a lot of things that are happening within cities can, can also be, uh, I would say, uh, framed within some of these, of these approaches. And I think these are... Uh, also uh, all ways of, of trying to organize this very, very complex um, uh, information that we have when you talk about uh, sustainable, uh, about smart cities and sustainable cities. So next slide, please. So the question is, how do we cross this with, um, with the idea of, of, of smart cities? Uh, next one, please. Um, we, of course, we, we know that uh, when you talk about uh, smart cities, uh, we have all these technologies, all these changes, uh, things that are, are very, very new. Uh, we talk about a lot of things. This, this has been uh, happening for the last centuries. So we, we know these waves of innovation. We know that uh, nowadays we are dealing with some of these issues, clean tech, sustainability, renewable energy. Um, uh, a lot of different things, nanotechnology, blockchain, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, Internet of Things. We, we discussed this in the beginning. So many different things. Next, please. Uh, the question is what's coming next, right? Uh, how can this connect with, uh, with the concept of smart cities? Uh, and I, I think we all already had very nice examples in, in the previous presentations about what's happening, this uh, Digital Twins uh, project. So many of these uh, ideas that were discussed before, they, uh, they tackle these uh, new topics and, and new frontiers that we are exploring right now, right? So next one, please. Uh, so if you, if you do a, a very quick search uh, in, 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 in the internet about smart cities, you see a lot of uh, um, projects, a lot of ideas, a lot of things uh, happening. Next one, please. And uh, if you filter out what's... Um, uh, what's what's there, and then you try to make a sense of that. Of that, uh, you find many, 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 many different concepts and ideas, and you know that smart cities deal with all of this. Of course, this is obvious: innovation, uh, environmental issues, design, communications, traffic, management, technology, mobility, etc. Education, infra infrastructure. Uh, in the previous presentation, you had a very nice uh, insight about infrastructure. Uh, but of course, all this generates data, and data is so central to all this. And it's it's some, something very important for uh, smart cities to manage smart cities and, and to understand what's what's happening. Next one, please. So I, I will try to focus very briefly on innovation indicators. So how do we measure innovation? Next one, please. Uh, how do we measure innovation? So basically, we are talking about statistics traditionally. Uh, innovation indicators are, are a statistical s a summary. Ne uh, previous one, please. The previous slide. Uh, so uh, it, uh, we are talking about stati statistical summary measures uh, of innovations uh, of uh, all, all those topics that I mentioned in the beginning: new processes, new products, new organizational methods, new marketing methods. So uh, how can we measure all these? Usually, these uh, indicators are standardized because we need to compare uh, regions, uh, countries, etc. So usually they are standardized by GDP or uh, different, uh, um, different variables, different measures. But uh, my question is, um, why should we standardize always by the, uh, using the same indicators? Maybe we can also look at democracy, we can look at happiness, uh, many different types of, of uh, I think, of, of uh, dimensions that we should look at. Next one, please. Uh, so this effort in trying to measure innovation um, has been developed by many countries. Uh, I, I, I can focus a little bit more on Europe because I, I'm, I live in Lisbon, Portugal, and I'm uh, mostly f uh, familiar with the, with the European system. How do we measure innovation in Europe? So basically we have this uh, Oslo hand, 
handbook, which is a, uh, like a, a manual, a book where all these issues are um, somehow studied and presented in a very clear and organized way. And so next one, please. This is being uh, used by uh, the European Commission to measure innovation across countries in, in EU, EU. And also it's the base for the, the Community Innovation Survey, which is a tool that we use in Europe to, to, to measure innovation. So all these questions are very uh, validated, very robust, and it's, it's going on for some years. And it's also used for the, for the European Innovation Scoreboard, uh, which is also a, a report, annual report that uh, is produced by the European Commission on innovation. And it's comparing innovation across all these countries. So there are key barriers to innovation. Uh, there are things that can be measured, other things cannot be measured. So when you talk about uh, data and innovation uh, in smart cities, I think it's important that we know um, what can we measure, what we cannot measure. Uh, how do we measure novelty? Well, it, is it new to the world, new to the city, to the country, to the region, to the industry, to the company? So you see you have many different units of analysis. Um, so how can you measure learning? So because if you talk about, and I, I found it very interesting, uh, the, uh, the last presentation about uh, infrastructure and about uh, the, this initial question, smart cities for whom? Uh, smart for whom? And so I think if we think about knowledge and about learning, because I, I believe that a smart city uh, and its implicit in, in the name and uh, in, the, in the definition, uh, it should be also um, made by people that have access to knowledge and uh, to learning, uh, to education, to many, many of these dimensions. So sometimes this is very difficult to measure, right? How can we measure that? If, if a city is learning more or less than uh, other cities. So it's complex. Next slide, please. Um, so traditionally, uh, people have been using uh, indicators such as R&D intensity, expenditure in R&D. Uh, uh, people look at firms and uh, are firms really ex uh, doing these expenditures in R&D? Uh, uh, are countries also uh, doing um, uh, expenditures on, on R&D, we have this ratio of business expenditure uh, to total production or value added. Uh, also, uh, gross domestic expenditures on R&D. So there are many, many measures. Um, these are key inputs to innovation, but we can also talk about outputs. And you, traditionally, people talk about patents. Um, uh, I'm sure that many technologies, many solutions that are being used in smart cities they, they, are, they involve high tech, they involve uh, patents, uh, this codified knowledge. And patents are an important in the indicator for innovation, but they uh, measure more invention than, than innovation. And I think we should look at um, uh, also not only at quantitative uh, issues, but also qualitative. So actually new goods and services, new solutions for cities, new governance methods. So I think we should be able to look at be uh, best practices and really in a very qualitative way, more than just quantitative. So when we talk about data, we, I think we focus too much on quantitative data because, and, and we always uh, think about big data, but there's much more, of course, uh, than, than just that. Uh, and so uh, next slide, what are the key processes and, the, and activities? And next one, please. Uh, so we can, we can, so because you have in inputs, outputs, but of course also the processes. So in-house R&D, external R&D, acquisition of machinery, equipment, software buildings, uh, um, acquisition of uh, existing knowledge from other enterprises or organizations and so on. So uh, we can think about this also for not only for companies, but for cities. What are the key processes that, that uh, are, are going on in these smart cities? Next one, please. So um, I think uh, relate, relating to, to data, we have um, we can have innovation and, and surveys, uh, initiative data, trade publications, internet. So there are many many sources of data. Uh, for example, this digital twins project. Of, uh, I'm sure it uh, relates a lot with data. It generates data as well. And, and so I think all these um, somehow can be or should be co combined. And uh, I believe new sources of data uh, are, are also uh, will also increase. Next slide, please. Uh, and I, I'm saying this because there's uh, 
next one, growing abundance of data generated uh, or made available online uh, and through uh, different digital environments. Also increasing ability to automate the collection, codification and analysis of data. So we know that there are many, many um, mechanisms to uh, automatically uh, deal with all these big data. And so I believe uh, we are uh, about to uh, to see a lot of a lot of uh, new indicators and, and uh, sources of data that will be used in the future. Um, and so this is important because it informs policy making, of course. It will allow us to, to, to build better cities, smarter cities, I, I believe. Next one, please. Uh, and I think I, I will just go, uh, next one, next one. And I will just finish, next one, next. Next one, please. Uh, can you just wrap up in a minute? I, we, yeah, we yeah. Basically, I, I would say that um, I would I, I would call attention for the the type of data that we we are using to uh, to to um, to deal with smart cities, and it's too much focus on quantitative data. I believe qualitative is important. Uh, I think we should also understand if we need primary data, secondary. Uh, or uh, I think essentially, if uh, should we look also at at the average, or should we look at at outliers? Uh, or should we we focus on the sample or on the population? Because I believe that a smart city that uh, is in, that is is uh, uh, feasible uh, and uh, working properly. I think it should focus. It should not work for the average citizen. It should work for everybody. So I think that's that's a concern. Uh, I have for, uh, regarding smart cities and regarding the data we are collecting and the way we are we are using it. Thank you, thank you so much, and um, I just finish here. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, all right, can you just close the um, the presentation deck on? Can you close it? So, okay, so sorry about the uh, all the uh, the time conflict. I know we have a lot of uh, the renowned the guests and speakers for today, the shining the uh, the sessions. You know, the personally, I just uh, see this uh, session is very important because we're talking about data, we're talking about governance. But um, in a way of um, the, the thinking about the building of the small city, I think that this is very sophisticated, con you know, the subject. But it should be um, dealt with uh, in a sense of um, the building of the, the you know. The, uh, the one step by step. I think that um, probably I can have another uh, sessions like this and some sometime very soon to maybe we can actually uh, make a, a different uh, pass of the, the discussions that we can actually share it in more. Uh, again, thank you very much for every speaker, uh, Professor Martin Weiss and uh, Professor Miguel and Professor uh, Zhu and Anna yes. from UTech Chamber, and uh, also Jawad. I'm really, truly sorry about, you know, uh, you know, not actually presenting right now, but we can actually uh, invite you to the next time, and you can actually jump in, uh, maybe you can just do first, okay? That's and, absolutely fine, no, no worry about it, Peter. Okay, sorry about that. I know you're just you know, rushing to the NS meetings, but you're definitely the first one to, to speak out. Uh, so uh, if anyone uh, would like to just jumping into the next session because next session is the last one we do we just put to you know we just have more discussion uh, you know uh, the we discuss much more about the smart cities in general so uh, dr. Ju and uh, professor vice uh, if you're available uh, please come here in Anna as well and uh, also the Lviv uh, the political uh, uh, national university as well. 
So thank you again, everyone. And uh, we're looking forward to, to meeting with you again soon, uh, sooner or later, just to uh, talk about more about this uh, small citizen thing. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you, everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.